to smoke alarms now. You're four times more likely to die in a house fire if there is no working smoke alarm. So what do manufacturers do to try to ensure they're fail safe? Test them, of course. The British Standards Institution in Hemel Hempstead. Here they don't just test products, they help write the rule book known as the standards. BSI was established in 1901. Uh, at the time it was the world's first national standards body and remains today the UK national standards body. For a smoke alarm to meet current safety standards, it has to pass more than 40 tests. It's critical that these products do actually perform the function that they're designed for. The last thing you want is to have a smoke alarm fitted in your house, which doesn't go off in the, in the event of a fire. Today we're going to be demonstrating some of those tests using a mid-range smoke alarm, currently on the market for about £20. We're starting with the most important piece of machinery, the smoke tunnel. We used to actually create real smoke for the tunnel using this heated bar here. Now we use atomized liquid paraffin it's a much more controllable way of producing simulated smoke. So, in goes the alarm. Then the smoke is blown gently around the tunnel, not that you'll be able to see it. It's very, very small quantities. We're talking literally parts per million here. So, when the smoke alarms are actually triggered, you wouldn't be able to see with the human eye the smoke in the atmosphere. The thickness of the smoke is gradually increased in order to measure exactly how much is needed to set the alarm off. What we're looking for here is to make sure that it doesn't go off at too sensitive a level. Um, otherwise, obviously, it would be going off at all hours of the night and giving false readings. Effectively, it has to trigger at a higher point than 0.2 dB per meter, and it triggered at 0.87, which is technically a pass. What we have to do now is to take five more measurements, and then we'll assess the results to ensure the ratio between the highest and the lowest trigger point isn't too wide. Effectively, what we're looking for here is to ensure that the product, once it's operated once, will operate again in the future at the same levels. 